coming back here into my Dreamweaver area, next thing I want to do is create a placeholder box right in the middle of this page, right after my top nav. This placeholder box is going to allow me to kind of look at the entire middle chunk of the website, or excuse me, the web page as an entire chunk, um, independent of, say, the top nav and the banner. So I do want to go ahead and put this in there. Now the mystery part here is that you won't actually see it. It's just going to be something that sits in the background and you know it's there because you placed it there. I'm going to go ahead and click on Insert, Layout Object, another div tag, and then this time I'm going to call it the Main Body Box. I'm going to now say that I want it after the top nav box. So I basically want it to sit right out here. I'm going to go ahead and click OK on that. And this time I definitely do not want any content on that whatsoever. Now, again, fairly disconcerting because it looks as if it disappeared. It hasn't. It's just got no content in there. I'm going to go ahead and click on my div main body box. I'm going to come over and create a rule for that. And I want to go in, and the thing, I don't want to fuss with its size. I want it to expand out. I want to expand in terms of height so it accommodates my content. I'm going to go ahead, though, and just select a, um, a color. And I'm going to choose the color of the shortest column that I anticipate. For my purposes, I'm going to just simply choose white. Click OK on that and later on you'll you'll see where that white color comes into play. Once again, nothing terribly exciting has happened. There's no content in there, content in there and all div tags will will collapse on themselves if there's nothing in there. I'm going to go ahead and start my columns. I'm going to click on insert layout objects div tag. Now, I want to create a side nav and I'm choosing the phrase side nav because that's going to be the function of the column. This time I don't want it after the main body box, but rather I want it inside of the main body box. So I'm going to drop on my drop down here, and I want to select the phrase after start of tag main body box. So I'm saying put this after the start of that tag, and I'm essentially embedding it. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and here in fact is the content of that. Now notice I haven't defined a color, but because the whole main body is white, um, that color is beginning to show for us. Now I'm going to go ahead um, and type in some phrases of nav1, nav2, nav3. These are my side navigation pieces as opposed to my top navigation pieces. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and come down and select div pound side nav because I want to manipulate that box. Come over and create a new rule for it. And here indeed, again, I'm, I'm developing that specificity. I'm going to click on OK. This time, I'm going to come over here to box, and I'm going to choose for that box to be 200 pixels wide. And I want it to be 200 because I know overall I'm 800, and I want my main column to be 600 pixels, and that leaves 200 for this side nav. Now, in this particular case, I'm not going to change the background color. I'm going to let that background color remain white. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And there you can see. OK, the next thing I want to do is create the main column box. And again, it's going to sit right inside this box that I've created. And it's going to eventually sit next to the navigation, side navigation box. I'm going to go ahead and click on Insert, Layout Objects, Div Tag and I'm going to choose to call this main column. This time, however, I want to insert it after the side nav. Remember the side nav is sitting inside of the main body box. If I insert this main column after the side na nav, it's still going to be inside that main box. It's just going to be sitting next to it eventually. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now, the default is that these boxes will expand out to their parent um, wrapper, and they will drop down one on top of the other. They won't line up nicely the way we would expect. Because I want to kind of keep my eye on this, I'm going to jump back out to the MSCT Dreamweaver area. I'm going to click on Dummy Text, and I'm going to actually copy a paragraph here, simply because I want to jump back into Dreamweaver and I want to place that dummy text in here so that I can see where things are going. Not that I have to have that dummy text in there, just makes my life a lot easier in terms of design. 
Now, I have not created a rule yet for it. I would like to do that now. So I'm going to click on main column. I'm going to come over and click on new CSS rule. Indeed, that's correct. I'm going to click on OK. This time I'm going to do a background of a pale color. It's These color combinations are not necessarily something we would do for real production pieces, but that's OK. I'm going to click on OK. Now, the mystery part is that it's still kind of sitting underneath the navigation bar, which is where I want it to be eventually, and that's fine, that's normal. I'm going to click on File and Save All just to make sure I'm doing uh, a good job in terms of that. The next trick that I need to do is I actually need to get these boxes to kind of float next to each other, and the technique is exactly that. We call it floating the boxes here. So I'm going to uh, come back up here and grab my side nav bar. I could have clicked on it just as I did, or I can come down and click on it which is more important, clicking on it on the side nav down here. I'm going to come over here to my rules and find that side nav rule that I've already created. I'm going to click on my pencil to edit that rule. Now this time I want to choose float left. Now, um, lots of things are going to start to get ugly here for a few minutes. Don't panic, you're still on the right track, it just looks weird for a few. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Um, before I do that, actually kind of take a peek with me over here. Notice that the nav is still sitting here. In a minute here, the entire um, other box is going to slide up and underneath it. Click OK, and there in fact it is. So if I were to click on this outer box, notice that it has taken up, um, I'm sorry, if I'm to click on this main column, you can see the yellow highlight around it. It has actually slid up and underneath that nav area. Notice that the nav area has also taken on the color of the main box and that's because it's sliding up and underneath. I now need to go back and edit that rule and I need to take that block that is my right hand column here and I need to float that to the right and also I also need to give it some constraining width. I need to say that it's going to be only 600 pixels wide. So I'm floating it to the right, I'm giving it 600 pixels wide, and it has a background color of yellow. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now things really look as if they've gone out of whack here, but uh, they have not. If I go ahead and take a look here in terms of the preview, notice that the two columns are now next to each other, but that white that was underneath the two columns has seemed to have disappeared. And the way to correct that and the final step of this two column piece is to go ahead and insert a layout object, a div, and I'm going to call this a footer. And this is going to basically sit at the bottom of these two columns and can act as the footer of the page. And very important here, I'm going to now say that I want it to become or insert itself after that right hand column which is the main one, the main column. And I'm going to say okay after tag of main column and I want it to be called footer, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And indeed here becomes that footer. Well, it's not quite positioning itself where I want it to but that's okay, this is still normal. I'm going to click on my div footer down here. I'm going to go over and create a new rule and indeed that naming is correct. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to come over here to the box. Now this time I don't want it to be constrained to a particular width but I do want it to clear both of these boxes that are floating up here. They're sitting there floating and I want this guy to steer clear of both of them. So I'm going to do clear both and I'm going to click OK. Now what has happened is that not only clears the two boxes but it allows that background box to, uh, which is white, to expand out. I'm going to go ahead and come in here and change the color to something just so I can differentiate and see that there is indeed a difference. I'm going to go ahead and save all of this and I'm going to go ahead and preview it or update it and there it is. That is all there is to creating a two column box in cascading style sheets. See you later.